YouTube, all those quickie, welcome back to the channel. Oh, good bro. Right, um, two, a few things. Microphone is definitely naked. <laughs> this is the little microphone I've been using. Um, it's a Zoom F1 field recorder. Don't like being dropped repeatedly. <laughs> it just crackles now. Useless, rubbish. So we're going off the sound on, on my phone, which is what I film all this stuff on. But that's junk. Um, so, uh, also, I was gonna be finishing off the exhaust, but I'm not doing that now, because as you know, the little mill is getting replaced with a great big jobby that's gonna be sitting over there. So I've been busy, I've been really busy. Um, still doing all these hangers. They've all gone off the powder coat and whatnot, the next batch. Um, so I'm just waiting for those to get done by Jack and then come back and I can build them all up. So today is my day off, uh, which means I've got a bit of time to put into the bike. Um, I have been, I've made a start on clearing out all that corner lot, um, cause there's a few other changes going on. The power keeps tripping out whenever I'm using the welder. It's like the initial start up, it's a sudden surge of it. I was having a look at it, it's got a class B trip in it. So, you know, um, a class B curve. Personally, I think it needs a class C, but that's just me. I'm no electrician, I don't know. But we had a Sparky and he's had a look and basically he's gonna run a whole new cable and everything else. So I can have a dedicated um, electric outlet for me welding stuff, which that's all fine. But if I just think if he's gonna run it on a class B, it's just gonna trip anyway, isn't it? I mean, that is fused, that goes into a 13 amp plug. I've never blown a fuse on it. I've always tripped it. So, and he was going on something about, oh, we can only get 16 amps down the cable and he wants to replace it with something that's gonna do 20, I think is what he said. Hence the whole new cable and all that malarkey. But if he's gonna go and put the same trip in it, then he's gonna trip again anyway, isn't it? I don't know. Maybe he's gonna change that as well. But anyway, that's happening this week, so I need to clear some space for that. But I also need to clear that area, and get rid of the shelving and move everything and put a great big shelf across the end there because we're making plans to get the mill. Um, I've been chatting with Doddy on email again. He's, he's blinding, I do like that man. I've not even met him. Um, and it looks like lockdown, as in all the travel restrictions, is gonna stop on the um, 29th of March. I think I'm right in saying. So any time after that, I'll be able to go and get the mill. I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna do it. It doesn't fit in the van, it's too big. The doors aren't big enough. It's 1.6 meters high, this thing. Um, so that ain't gonna go in the van. Um, so I'm gonna need to hire a van. And I was thinking about getting like a Luton with a tail lift. Well, I was looking at the specs on the Lutons as well. They will lift 500 kilos. I'm pretty sure this weighs more than 500 kilos. Um, I did a quick Google, and I reckon we're gonna come in around 2,000 pounds, which is 900 and something or other kilos. So I don't really wanna break the truck. <laughs> so I'm still madly looking around for options on how I can do it. It's up in Manchester, near Manchester Airport. I'm down in Plymouth, so that's like four and a half hours away. Uh, it's probably a lot longer coming back with 2,000 pound of, <laughs> of milling machine in the back. <laughs> We've also got to figure out how I'm going to get it up and into it. Because bless him, Doddy's like 84. He, you know, he's, he's, not going to help, he's not going to help lifting it, I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> However, we might be roping in, Steve-O's definitely coming, but we might be roping in some other help as well. If it comes off, that is going to be mega. Um, so that's on the go, so I'm doing all that over the next couple of weeks. So that's gonna keep me busy. Um, the exhaust, I was gonna be carrying on with, but I've been chatting with Jamie. So, been getting stuff. I've got another length of 64 mil um, stainless steel, 1.5 mil, 304 grade stainless, exactly the same as all the rest of it. So that's good, so I can replace that middle bit. That's all fine. 
which is cool. And I was going to be using this. So this is 38 mil ID perforated exhaust tube. We're just going to be using this for the baffling. Essentially, I just cut it off. I'll put a disc front and back. Exhaust wadding will go around the middle, and that's going to get shoved in some of this like that. Basically, get welded up, and that's going to be our baffles. And it's going to be two because those things are noisy as a noisy thing on National Noisy Day. But I was chatting with Jamie and I punted him a question going, so what's the diameter of a standard link pipe on that engine? Um, and he's on about, um, what was it he said? Is it 45 or 48 mil? Something like that anyway. Um, so I, I just think using this, is, I'm gonna be choking it. You know, it's, gonna, it's a free flow exhaust anyway. Um, you know, it's all Delcovic headers and blah blah blah. Um, but we're going to have two baffles in it just to try and shut the thing up a little bit. And I don't want to choke it by using too small a diameter. So I've got some bigger stuff coming, which basically means I can't do the exhaust until it gets it. Should be here on Monday, I want to say. <coughs> uh oh, Covid. <laughs> so. Um, you know, we just got to wait for that to get here before I can actually finish the exhaust off. But that'll be alright, give me something to do next week. I mean, it's not like I'm busy or anything, is it? <laughs> right, so I need something else to do. Because, um, basically I'm going to need to sell the little mill to get the scales and various other bits and pieces to stick on the big mill when it gets here. Um, so that means I'm gonna be without my mill um, for however long it takes me to get the big one up and kicking. And there's a few bits I need to really get done because we are painfully close to the point of this all getting tore down so I can weld up the frame properly and we can sort the engine out and powder coat, blah, 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 blah. You've heard it all before. So basically the little jobs I need to do is there's the other footrest hanger, uh, yeah, the gear shift pedal, that needs doing. There's the top shock mount for the rear suspension. That needs doing, although that could be done way later. Um, but I really need to get the peg sorted so when Steve open come down here, sort of start of April, then he can sit on it and we can confirm everything's good and where he wants to have all his pedals set and all that sort of stuff. So really I need to get that lever done. Um, which means another foot peg, another little stubby jobby on the end of the lever and the lever itself and all the bushings. So, guess what I'm doing today? I'm doing that. Um, this is essentially the bit we're going to be replacing. He needs to get me some bits. We need some more rose joints. They're knackered and they're both right-handed, so they're useless. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to sort them out for me. Um, but I've already got a pattern on this side and that's basically what I'm going to be copying. I just need to put this in a different place. That's it. So essentially, exactly the same as that one. Just a bit different. Oh yeah, check out the new T, Asbo. <laughs> I did have a fella comment. Why do you keep going on about Asbo? What's an Asbo? <laughs> Asbo is the name of the purple bandit. And um, if you haven't seen the videos, the, it's all its own playlist, but basically it came with a proper noisy boy exhaust. It was an exhaust system with no baffling about that long. It was deafening. <laughs> so basically the bike earned its nickname. ASBO stands for Antisocial Behaviour Order, which is basically a prize that the police give to people that is unruly and loud and obnoxious and don't conform and all that sort of stuff. So that's why the bike got called Asbo. That's the sticker that's on the bike, which I did, just because it's got the Suzuki thingy on it. And there you go. So um, these are now up in the Teespring store. You'll, you'll, if you have a look in the description, I'll stick one of them card jobbies up as well. You can go and have a look, see. There, there's all sorts of stuff up there if you want anything. And we do get a kickback from it, so it does massively help the channel. Really, really does. Um, but you know, at least you get something to show for your, your contribution as well. Hey. Right, I've got a piece of that, I've got one of them, and I've got a pattern on the bike. So let's have that off and we'll mark it out and we'll get to it. <laughs>
knife, so I'm just sketching stuff out at the minute. This isn't, you know, just to get me spacing and all that sort of stuff. That's basically what we're gonna be doing. Just put some blue on it, just sort of see what's what. Um, it's gonna be the same dimension as this, all over, it's just that that bit needs to come down here, just for the gear shift. So, we'll mark all this out properly. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'm gonna chop this out on the bandsaw, just around the outside. We'll mark it all out properly as well, because obviously I need to get these holes smack in the right place. Hole centers from there to there is 125 mil. So we'll just do the same as we did last time. Two five mil holes, bosh, bosh, 125 mil apart. Everything else will be keyed off then. Um, and I'll also put that other one in just as a reference. And then it's just a case of shaping it down and, and you know, getting it to look like that, basically. Just the other way around. Right, let's mark this up properly first. Um, Deeper. We're getting there. You can tell. That's the second time I've cleaned up and it's still a mess. <laughs> um, one side didn't come out as nice as the other. Um, basically I had a, a thinner, um, that's a 10 mil uh, uh, bit. So I ramped the speed up a bit. I think I went a bit too far. It's a four fluid mil. I think I went a bit too far. I don't think the chips had a chance to get out because it's, it's quite a rough finish. So I need to go over that again, I think, when I come to doing my final dressing up. Um, but it's getting there. So two sides done. I've got the three hard points, the three holes in there. Bored this one out as well, so that's 21 mil. Same as the other one. Um, so I can get a brass boss to sort of go in there as well. Um, I think next stage is basically have another tidy up and then I'm going to get the rotary table out and put the face on it because then really it's just a case of I can I can do the whole of the outside and I can do the step that goes around there and then it's just a case of sorting out this this little arm so that's easy enough right tidy up
just a plain and simple lever. Same as this one, it's got the shoulder on the back of it, just as a spacer rather than sticking washers and stuff in it. Um, and obviously this arm comes down at a you know, different place to that, just because it's got to push the, the shift rod. That we ain't gonna be able to use, I'm sure, because we moved the pegs back and down. So we'll have to make another one of them as well. Or we can just get one, you get all these dirt cheap in various different lengths. Um, he's also ordered some more of these rose joints, M6, just because that way I can stick one on here, one on the other end, a left and a right handed thread, and we're in. So, all we've got to do now is make these bits. Um, start with that one, I suppose. Right, copy. <laughs> Covered in grub. <laughs> right, that's it. Covered in muck. <laughs> and my workshop's a mess again. Um, Jack's just turned up the whole load of hangers that he's just panic tape, which is all cold. Um, made another foot peg. Let's take that little nub off the end as well. So we've got two pegs now. We've got two of the little jobbies that go on the end. Um, plus, obviously, I've got the other lever. So, really, all I've got left to do is to sort out a couple of little brass bosses like that to make it look nice and space it all properly. And uh, we're in, we're sorted. So that's all good. So um, I'm gonna put all this to one side because I really do need to get all that lot bagged up before it gets scratched or anything else. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. Um, but well on the way to this, so hopefully when Steve-O does get to come down, um, you know, was it after the 29th of March or something? Then we'll have all the pegs on and it can sit on it and we can make sure everything's in the right place and blah, blah, blah. Exhaust tubing should be coming as well next week. So I want to crack on and get that finished because it'd be really nice to have all that lot done so he can see it when he walks in, see what he thinks. So I don't know, I'm either going to finish these up just because it's lots of bits and stuff or I'm going to do the exhaust. I haven't decided yet. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Um, as far as the mill goes, the mill is getting sold. 
because <coughs> um, I need to I need to clear out that corner, make some space for the the new bigger mill that Doddy's um, giving me. So I need to get a proper home for it. It's like a 30 inch table to it. I mean, that's quite a size, isn't it? So all that one needs to go. Um, this mill is getting sold. Um, it's an, apparently the new mill that I'm getting is an MT3 taper. So a lot of the tooling and stuff I can reuse. So what I'm gonna do at some point, probably be the next quick video actually, is I'll have it all sort of, you know, stripped down, cleaned up, blah, blah, blah. I'll lay everything out so you can see exactly what's included. Because um, there was quite a few people that got in touch saying, how much do you want for it then? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's worth a couple hundred quid just to keep it as a pillar drill. Because I can bolt all my jigs to it for doing all this lot. Um, it goes beyond that, it, it, yeah, I'll just sell it, that'll be fine. Um, so it's going to be coming with the scales and I've got a spare spindle and loads of bits and bobs and odds and sods. But you'll see all that in this video. I'll probably stick it on eBay. I'll pop a link in the description. And if you want to bid on it, bid on it. That's it. Um, but I need to clear a bit of space. I need a bench back. I need a big bench back and I need a hole in that corner. <laughs> and I need about two hours extra every day just to get everything done that I need to get done. Oh, look at this. She's going to be so happy with me when I'm walking. <laughs> I need to bend these trousers. I'm pretty much certain that they could stand up on their own. Anyway, that's where I'm leaving it today. Um, it's just making little bits and doodads and stuff, you know. But there you go. All needs doing. <laughs> anyway, take it easy and stay safe. Do stay safe. Oh, I'm booked in for my jab as well. I got my first jab on the 21st. Halfway there, the other one's in June sometime, but it's coming. Anyway, look after yourselves and we'll see you soon. Laters!